Welcome back. With talk of a general election mounting, what would life look like under a Labour government? Would they deliver Brexit? If so, what kind? What industries would they nationalise? How would they manage our transport infrastructure? To answer some of those questions, I'm joined now by Rachel Maskell, who's Labour's Shadow Rail Minister, and joins us from York. Thank you, Rachel Maskell, for talking to us today. Good morning. So, let's start, first of all, with the fact that Jeremy Corbyn has been calling for an election quite vocally recently to settle all of this Brexit uncertainty. Are you ready? Well, absolutely. We know now that this treacherous act that the Prime Minister is about to commit by taking us out of the European Union with no deal. We must remember that Mr Johnson was elected by just 90,000 people and is using that, not even a mandate, to really destroy our economy. And we're seeing already the impact of that with jobs tumbling and the threat of clearly worse to come. So we believe that we've got the programme for government. In fact, people have told us that we're the most prepared opposition for government that there has ever been. And we've got the policies in place which will transform people's lives up and down the country. And that's what will make a real difference, whether it's housing, whether it's putting our NHS back together or investing in our creaking infrastructure. Now is the time for a Labour government and that's what we're ready to serve our country with, the policies that will make a real difference for the day-to-day -day lives of people across the country. We'll, we'll come to those policies uh, in a moment, particularly as you mentioned uh, infrastructure. But Despite the fact, as you say, that uh, you know there are, the policies are there, that there are economic question marks about the uh, the UK right now, still your polling is not looking good right now. Actually, the Tories are looking stronger than Labour. I mean, why do you think that is? Well, clearly Mr Johnson's got a, a, a little bounce at the moment, but of course, when people start seeing bounce, as they actually. are, the way that. Well, the way that they're seeing the, the Prime Minister now with no plan cancelling, the comprehensive spending review about investing in the future of our country and instead just having a, an election spending spree, people will soon come to realise that this individual is not acting in the interests of anybody but himself and the preservation of the Conservative Party. And, of course, what Labour want to do is make a difference to people's lives. That's why we exist and that's what um, we will do in government. And that's why we're hungry to be in power to run our country in the interests of the people of this country. One explanation some people have for, for why uh, the polling isn't looking especially good right now, especially strong for Labour, is that no one quite understands what your Brexit position is. So, if you will, could you just explain it in one sentence, if you will, what is Labour's Brexit position? Well, it's very simple because we understand the devastation that No Deal will bring to our country. And, and when Parliament has voted against No Deal, we absolutely will not recklessly take our country out of the European Union. But more than that, we want the country to determine its future. And we believe that this question now needs to go back to the country so that the people can decide. And we've said that in a referendum we'll be campaigning to remain in the European Union, but not just remain, to reform, because Labour is about reforming, whether locally, nationally, across Europe or internationally. We're a party that wants to see real reform and change so that the institutions um, work for people in our country. We can repair the public services and make sure we're making the investments for future jobs and the future prosperity of our country. OK, so let's assume uh, that Labour does win the next election. You're in government. What are you going to do with the railways? Are you going to be nationalising them? Well, we put forward uh, a new programme of public ownership, not going back to the old models of privatisation, but one where we see real democratisation, but also devolution across the railway, joining back together, track and train, making sure that the railway can work as one. Over the last year, we've seen a billion pounds worth um, put out in, in compensation. Even over the last week, we've seen real um, problems on our rail network. We need our transport system to work for everybody, interconnected with buses and active travel, cycling and walking, so that we can make sure that people can get to their destination without that stress which everybody feels as they get on the, the railway system at the moment. OK, so, so um, there's another question, which is how long it's going to take. John McDonnell said last year that potentially this could be done in the space of one parliamentary term, five years. He said you were working on the detail, so, you know, that was a year ago. Presumably you've seen the detail now. How long is it going to take? 
Well, we know that we want to get on with this. We're going to be impatient in government, and that's why first piece of but legislation is to make sure that we get that um, put in place. Well, we'll get on straight away with putting our railway system back together and our whole transport system. We must remember the buses as well, which are a real mess. The routes aren't going down the, the journeys that people want to travel, and we want to give real power to local authorities to be able to put a public service back. We must well, this, remember that's it, what it, our it, transport this is, this system is all, is This about. is all very well, but, but just... Specifically, my question, how, how long is it going to take? Yep. And I've said we're going to get on with that uh, immediately. First Queen's speech will be pressing ahead with changing the legislation and then bringing immediately the railway system back together into one public body, which then we can bring the, the regions and devolve it to sounds, transport It sounds rather like you don't know how place. long... It sounds rather like you don't no, know no, quite straight how long it's away. going to take. Straight, no, no, straight away. absolutely, You're going to have them it's going to be straight away. We don't have time. Away. Well, we, we don't have time to waste, so we'll bring that under a public ownership model. Um, but obviously, when franchises are relinquished and the government aren't issuing new franchises now, they're just giving direct awards, so that will hasten the process to make sure that we've got one railway system moving forward. But... I mean, again, OK, so we'll leave that question of how long it's going to take. It sounds like it's going to be longer than immediately because you've got to wait for those franchises to, no, to expire. No, no, no. What, what about... You said joining track and train. Are you going to nationalise the trains as well as the operating companies? So you talked about the operating companies. What about the actual trains themselves? Are, you, are we going to be bringing them back into public ownership? Well, at the moment, we have to look at who owns the rolling stock, and they belong to lease companies, which um, we're paying about a third additional to lease those trains. So, of course, we want to own our assets because that ultimately means we're saving money for the taxpayer. So, so we will be buying back the rolling stock. Heavily subsidised the railway we? system is. We will be buying back the rolling stock, will we? we, we it's not a case of buying back. It's about, obviously, as we're investing in the rolling stock, that we will own that in, in the public hands as opposed to in these lease companies which are owned by hedge funds, which clearly are not acting in the interest okay. of the public so, service. So, and so costing how much will the state that cost? A, a, a lot. How much will that cost, Rachel Maskell, to, to well, buy back those trains, to, to get the trains in public hands? As I've said, the whole programme is not going to cost... Um, we can't just pull out little bits. The whole programme is not going to cost because what it will bring is about a third saving, which is being wasted at the moment. We hear it from the rail industry um, themselves, the stop-start approach. It's really costing the rail industry um, and it's costing jobs as well with the um, switching on and off of programmes. So our investment is very much about reusing the resource in a smarter way and that's why it's not about the expense, it's about the structures that will make the difference to the public to have their smooth journeys every day. But it, it does sound rather as if we don't really have all of that detail. We don't know, at least you don't know, how long it's going well, to take. Do. You don't know how we much it's going to cost to bring, those, to bring those trains onto, into public ownership. And there is something at least we do As know, I said, which we'll is be about saving the performance. a third of the, the funding. Well, yeah, OK, right. But there is something we do know, which is about the performance of the nationalised bits of the railway. And I just wonder whether... You know, looking at... There is one line, for instance, LNE, oh, the old Virgin uh, East Coast. That was brought back into public ownership uh, just last year. I wonder, do you know, given, given that we have a test case for how good the government could be at running uh, one of these railway networks, do you know whether it has done better since becoming a state-owned uh, enterprise or worse? Well... What we know is we're not going to maintain this model of the, the railways moving forward. No, but specifically, has, has, the, no has, the North East, has the North East so, line performed better or worse under public ownership? Well, there have been some problems. Um, we recognise that, not least. Um, it, the performance figures won't be that great because of the disaster across the railways under Chris Grayling, who, you know, we know last May um, the trains just simply didn't run. So, obviously, the performance figures have been hit because of the way That's that right. he they, they have went been worse, about the worse in terms of punctuality, changing. worse in terms of cancellations, worse on most metrics since going into public ownership, which just raises the question, why but, is the government able to do this better no. than the private sector? 
As, as I explained, it's because of the disaster which Chris Grayling brought about through the, the, the timetable changes, completely unplanned and with his interference. We won't be seeing that. We'll see the real integration, the connectivity brought together across our, our railway system. So those questions will not be the same under a Labour government. We're not talking about a Chris Grayling failed model. We're talking about a Labour strong model of interconnectivity with the experts running our train service. And they, when we talk to the industry, they're excited about what we want to achieve.